guys, Trevor from Smashworks. We got uh, a little ACDC in the background and uh, an awesome lot as well. Anyway, it's Monday morning. Um, a lot of people coming into my office, a lot of people coming to me from here at Diablo and uh, a lot of athletes in general talking about a lot of shoulder issues. And so I started to go over something called scapulohumeral rhythm, which basically means how the scapula moves. So you have to remember uh, and how the scapula moves in relation to the humerus. Let's go a little further. So the humerus is this bone right here. And then the scapula we all know is that bone that's planted against the rib cage. Now the dilemma is that they function as one um, coupled joint and the only bony articulation, the only place that that scapula and that humerus, that shoulder, even connects to what's called the axial skeleton is this clavicle here. So we have something called an AC joint right up in here. And uh, we've all heard about the AC separation. Well, there's a lot of things that you can't do once that's done. And uh, a lot of issues with that because that's kind of what's called a sprung load. So what happens is that, that um, clavicle pops up off that AC joint when those tendons uh, let go and it causes all kinds of problems and it's, it's just never the same. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure that uh, we fix it before it happens. How's that sound? So remember what I said, what we do at Smashworks is um, we increase human performance. I don't rehab, I don't prehab. I want you guys working the best that you possibly can as you are all the time. So we're gonna go ahead and get that scapula moving the way it's supposed to and unglue it because about 90% of shoulder problems are actually scapula problems. So remember, the shoulder is the scapula and the scapula is the shoulder. So we're gonna go over the first few things. This is a two-part series, so we'll go over uh, half of it today and half of it tomorrow because there's a ton of stuff to cover. And, uh, and I'm actually itching to work out right now, so I'm gonna go through all this stuff and then I'm gonna go uh, hit it real hard. So I'm gonna put this down right here. You know me and the camera, right? So we're gonna move that down. And the first thing you wanna do is you wanna mobilize that thoracic spine. Before you do anything, any of this stuff, this is step one. So you're gonna get on this um, roller, okay? I don't care if it's PVC pipe, I don't care if it's a pipe you find at a construction zone, it doesn't really matter. Just don't steal it, borrow it, bring it back. You know how the rules go. But get on this, you wanna open up that T-spine, that thoracic spine. The way we do it, give yourself a big hug. So what that does is that protracts the scapula. So protraction is pulling it apart, retraction, is bring it back together, makes that diamond in the center. So we want to protract the scapula. So we do that, just give ourselves a big hug. So easy. Now this stuff's so easy to do, it's so easy not to do, right? So we're just gonna go ahead and open and close. Open and close, do this a bunch of times. I'm gonna make this really quick so we don't have to spend all this time watching me roll around on a roller. Gives you guys have better things to do on a Monday. So you're gonna go ahead, open this all the way up, all the way down to the bottom of the traps, you're gonna go all the way to the top. So you're doing that entire T-spine. That's step one, okay? Get that out of the way. Now, the second part of this is there's a muscle called the serratus anterior. It's up under here, so there's like a seam under here, all these little bumps we feel. That's the front part of it attaching to the ribs, and the back is on the underside of that scapula, and it's what's gonna allow that scapula to come in and out. So if you've ever seen, um, a winged scapula, right, where that scapula from the side is kind of sticking out. If you look at them across their back, this is gonna help suck that scapula back into that rib cage and allow it to float around properly. This is so cool, it's so easy to do. So if you see, what I've got is I've got a band here. So I want you to get some good tension on this band. So lock out your arms, externally rotate as always, step forward just a little bit. So I'm leaning with my weight. I'm hauling out, rib cage is sucked down, but all I'm doing is I'm letting the shoulder come back still locked out, and I'm pressing out with the, with the entire arm. So you're gonna feel that scapula go back and forth. It's gonna protract and retract. So back, out, in, out, in, out. So we're gonna do a set of 15 like that. You'll feel it a little bit in the front of the shoulder, but not too much. You're gonna do the same thing on both sides. Really, really important. What that's gonna do is if you look without the band, I'm coming out and I'm coming in. I'm coming out, I'm coming in. So this motion here is gonna allow that serratus anterior to start working properly. The next one is this one. You're gonna take a wall ball, bed ball. You're gonna take it, press it up as high as you can, okay? So I'll take a knee so it's a little easier to see. So we're gonna press it up like this, okay? And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend and I'm gonna drop down. Extend and I'm gonna drop down. The reason we do a med ball is if it falls, it's not gonna crack you in the skull, it's not gonna hurt. This is gonna be a lot harder than you think. So we're gonna make sure we maintain that nice overhead position. Elbows locked out, all the way up, all the way down, all the way up, seriously. Doesn't it make you just wanna watch Apollo Creed and Rocky Balboa go at it right now when you hear this song in the background, Eye of the Tiger? So, all the way up, 
all the way down, all the way up, all the way down. Another set of 15. So that's gonna get that upward rotation of that scapula. Remember, the scapula has in and out. Um, it's gonna have up and down, and it's gonna have rotation, okay? This is the motions you have. So this is gonna hit that levator scapula, which is the top of the scapula. It's gonna bring it out a little bit. So that's the second part of this. And then the third one is we're just gonna take a band. I want you to go pretty wide, so just a little wider than, uh, than shoulder width. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna go out and in, out and in. So we're just doing this, again, 15 times. This one gets a little spicy because you'll be surprised how much you hit that scapula and you'll feel that trap activate. So I'm gonna turn around and you can see what's going on. So all we're doing is this. Good, so easy to do. But I want you guys to use the light band. Check this out, this is a really, really light band. This isn't stuff to gain a lot of muscular, crazy, crazy explosive strength for doing your snatches, or doing your cleans, or doing any of your pulls. This is designed to get that scapula to, moving, to move the way it's supposed to. So we mobilize with that um, foam roller, okay? We get on the band, get that serratus anterior working, get that med ball overhead. That's such a fun one because the number of texts I'm gonna get from that one with people dumping it is gonna be astronomical, because I've done it. That's why I'm using a med ball, don't use a dumbbell. Not kidding, use a med ball. All the way up, out, in, out, in. Okay, and the last one. Good, I said this was gonna be a short video, but we're gonna do this one more time. So, we're gonna take a kettlebell, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that shoulder sit in the back of the socket the way it's supposed to. So remember, the most stable portion of that scapula, or of that humerus rather, is sitting in the back portion of that glenohumeral joint. So that shoulder joint, a lot of people, if you look at me, a lot of people have this anterior shoulder carriage. So what happens is we drive, we type, you know, we text, we do all this stuff. So then when we get into the bottom of our dip, the shoulders tend to slide forward in our muscle up and in our ring dips, which puts a lot of strain on that joint and it takes it way out of the place it's supposed to be and actually compromises the integrity of the joint. And then that scapula has to fight because there's so many muscle attachments on that scapula to hold that shoulder in place. So we wanna make sure this is all working the way it's supposed to. So let's set the shoulder in the right spot too, why not? So you're just gonna take this, use a 35, use a 53. You're gonna externally rotate, block the arm like this, and you're just gonna camp out here for three minutes. Three minutes, okay? Not throwing gang signs, three minutes, okay? You're just gonna hang out here. The reason I have you block the arm is to keep that elbow nice and stable so you don't get tired. Now, I'm not gonna make you watch a video for three minutes of me holding the kettlebell, but you're gonna feel that shoulder sliding into the back portion of the joint where it's so nice and stable and actually the strongest it can be. And then you're gonna take your hand, go ahead and dump it off to one side. All right, so we got all our homework. We've got opening up the T-spine with the roller, We've got um, using the band for that serratus anterior. We've got the overhead work with that med ball. Remember, lock out that shoulder, press up, press down, press up, press down. Um, we've got the uh, retraction, protraction with a really light band. I can't stress that enough. And then we've got that kettlebell locking it out to let it sit into the back portion of the joint, sit in that posterior portion, get it really, really strong. This is part one of uh, scapulohumeral rhythm. God, that's a lot of stuff to say. How about we just call it the shoulder scapula fix? Does that sound better? Hey, I'm Trevor from Smashworks. This is Monday. I'll see you guys tomorrow.